Let's say you've taken an interest in BTRFS and its snapshotting capabilities. Maybe you've even watched Chris Titus' guide here about the subject. However, when you launch your favorite Linux distro and install it, to your disappointment, you find that subvolumes are nowhere to be found. What do you do? Well, this video has the answer to that. Now, for the purposes of our video, we're going to be taking a look at MX Linux. Uh, it's one of the most popular Linux distros out there, and interestingly, it actually does support BTRFS subvolumes right out of the box, but there's one catch. You can't do that on a Lux encrypted system. Unfortunately, there's a bug with the installer where your system just gets stuck in the bootloader process. So, unfortunately, you can't have encryption and subvolumes on MX Linux without doing it manually. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to install encrypted MX Linux with BTRFS, but no subvolumes, and then add those subvolumes afterwards. So let's get started. So here's MX Linux's installer on KDE Plasma. And this is the configuration that I set up inside of the partitioning scheme. So I've already got my password set. I've already got um, all the partitions figured out. Do note that we have uh, kind of large partitions for EFI and boot. And that's because uh, when you update MX Linux, it's going to put uh, different bootloaders into there. So you do need a bit more space with this particular distro in those partitions. So I'm just going to go through and install this, and we'll be right back with the guide for everything that you have to do after the installation. All right, MX Linux has successfully installed, and I've also gone ahead and updated all the packages on the system. That's an important first thing to do once you've installed any Linux distribution. So we're going to get subvolumes set up. And if you want all the commands to copy and paste, then there is a written version of this guide available on the MX Linux forums. Link is in the description below. So let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is list any existing subvolumes that we have. Uh, there shouldn't be any. So the command for that is sudo btrfs uh, sub v list and then the mount point. So we have no subvolumes for root and we also have no subvolumes for home. Now, what we can do is we can create a subvolume with the create command, but then we have to put all of the stuff into that uh, subvolume. So one way to do that without having to do that extra work of copying is to create a snapshot. So we're just going to use the snapshot part of the command, and we're going to define where the snapshot is coming from and where it's going to. So now we've created a snapshot. If we run that list again, we can see that the snapshot uh, is now a subvolume in our list. And then we can also list all of the folders in root. And we can see in the top left that the uh, subvolume that we created is now a folder located in our root directory. And the same thing is going to happen when we do this for slash home. Okay, so we can do a list for home. And then we can do an ls slash home, and there you go. There's our uh, subvolume. All right. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to boot into these subvolumes, and they're going to become the actual root and home directories. And once we do that, we then need to mount the top level where everything currently is and get rid of all that stuff so that it's not hanging around, taking up space as we use our system. So we need to make a couple directories. We're going to do sudo make directory, mkdir. Um, we're going to go to the root directory and top. This, these do need to be inside of the root directories because if they are not, then um, you won't be able to access them and mount to them once you've uh, set up these uh, subvolumes as your respective root directories. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to do uh, home slash at home slash top. All right, so now we have those directories. The next thing we need to do is edit the FS tab so that it will automatically mount stuff as the system boots up, as well as provide time shift the information it needs to uh, figure out how to set up snapshots. So I'm going to use Kwrite, but you can use the terminal editor or any other graphical editor that you want. And very importantly, we need to do this inside of the snapshot, because if we don't, then it's not going to see it. Because when we uh, boot up the system, it's going to mount the subvolume. We're going to edit a file to do that later. And 
that's going to put the sub volume as root. So if you mount the current version of FS tab, then uh, it's not going to see that. It has to be inside the snapshot. So make sure that we go there and we get K right. All right, now I'm really quickly going to go and uh, get these all prettied up so that they're easy to identify and work with. So I'll just speed this part up. All right, so now that we have clear labels on everything, uh, let's work on actually getting our FS tab to the state that we want it to be in so that we can you know, use the system and get subvolumes working. So let's start off by making a couple copies of this uh, root mounting. Um, and we're going to turn off that one. This is our backup. So in case anything fails, we can go in here with a bootable USB or live CD and we can revert that in our FS tab and go back to the way things were and then continue to troubleshoot. All right, so uh, this is good. This top line here, um, what we need to do is we need to add SSD. Since I'm using an SSD, I could have done that at boot, but I decided not to and decided to show that here because you're oftentimes not thinking about that as you're setting up a system and it isn't entirely clear right out of the gate that you can just add this flag in the installer. So uh, next we need to do subvol equals at and that's going to mount the correct subvolume. Now for this one, we need to do top and we're going to do SSD as well. And then subvol uh, ID equals five. That's going to mount the top level of the, of the partition. So that's not a sub volume. That's actually the top level of the partition. That's going to be mounted to slash top, which is the directory that we made earlier um, inside of our root directory. So now we just have to do a similar thing for home. So let's create a couple copies. And then we're going to comment out the bottom one as our backup. And then this one's going to be slash home slash top. And then here we need to add SSD as well as uh, subvol equals uh, at home. And then here we're going to do a subvol ID of 5. Uh, importantly, one other thing I want to mention, if you're not using an encrypted system, these are going to be UUIDs, just like uh, boot and EFI. So uh, that's why we're copying, so that way you don't have to go and find the UUIDs. Um, if you're not using time shift, then you can use subvolume IDs here. So just keep that in mind. That's what Chris Titus showed in his guide. So if you'd prefer to do that, then you can, but if you're using time shift, then you're going to have to do it this way. Otherwise, when it parses FS tab, it won't know what's going on. All right, so uh, with all of that, we should be good to go. So let's save this. Hopefully there are no typos, but that's why we have the backups. <clears throat> of course, if I mess up, then I just have to retake this. So... <laughs> Anyway, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is edit the grub config and do something very similar with it. So we're going to do kwrite uh, slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg. And in here, we're going to scroll down. Um, what you can do is you can control F and look for export. Um, let's see, export Linux underscore gfx so once you see that then you're pretty close to where you need to be I just made it look for a line that's unique and here we are this is where we want to be so right between row and quiet we are going to do uh, root flags equals subvol equals at and let's add a space there since that's how it is in my documentation and we're just going to save that. Now we can close and we should be good to reboot. So let's do a pseudo reboot and make sure that everything is going to hope that everything is going to work. So I'm going to speed this part up for you. Oh, one thing I should mention is that we do need to choose the default mount option here because that's the one that we edited.
Okay, we have successfully booted into our system. Let's open up a terminal, and now we're going to remove all the stuff from the top level. So just to double check, let's do an ls of our top level here. We can see that we don't have the uh, at subvolume, but we do have a top right here. So that means that we're inside the subvolume, and this is where we want to be. And let's do the same thing for slash home, and again, we see the same results. So we know that we're inside of our subvolumes, everything mounted correctly. So uh, now we need to be very careful with this command because you normally don't want to run a sudo rmrf on stuff, but we're going to here because it's justified. Um, so if we did that, that would kill your system, just be aware of that. But we're going to do slash home slash top, and then we're going to destroy my user. Now my user is named user. If I had any other users on the system, then I would need to nuke each one of them inside of that top level there. So we're going to run that. And that got done pretty quickly. And now we need to do uh, slash top. And we're going to use a little bit of bash syntax to make this work. So we're going to put inside of brackets an, an exclamation point, which means exclude. And we're going to exclude the at sign, so that way we don't delete the subvolume that is in there. Um, and that's something I should mention, actually. So before we move on to this, let's just do an ls of slash top. You can see that's the same uh, place that we were earlier when we booted the system before we set up subvolumes, or after we set up our first subvolume and, and nothing else. So let's go back to this. We're going to get rid of top, and we're going to exclude at using the dollar sign, and then we're going to do star for everything else. And that should uh, nuke everything at the top level, and because BTRFS is a copy on write file system, uh, all of the actual stuff will be fine, and the amount of space that our system is taking up on the drive should be roughly about the same either way. But again, as you continue using your system, the files will change, and so then you'll end up having maybe twice as much disk usage as you should. Not quite, but you get the idea. And this command is going to take a while, so I will speed it up and get back to you. Okay, the command has finished. Now we need to edit FS tab and no longer mount our top file systems. So uh, we're just going to do a kwrite again. And this time we can go to the live FS tab because we don't, we're not, we don't have subvolumes to deal with. We're inside of the subvolume right now. <clears throat> okay, and we're just going to comment out the lines that we used. You can delete them, it's fine. Um, that's not a comment. There we go. Save. And now those lines won't be run when we boot the system. And uh, time shift will be smart enough to ignore them because they've got the uh, pound sign in front of them. Okay, so uh, let's ignore that error. That's not an actual problem. Um, next thing that we need to do is we need to update all the grub entries. So, as you might have saw, we only updated one grub entry, but MX Linux has multiple grub entries, so we need to update all of them. Now, a very easy way to do that is to open up the MX boot options. You may or may not have to do this depending on your distro, but uh, this is generally the easiest way to handle it. And all we need to do is change the timer, and we can actually change it right back to what it was and click apply, but I want the shorter timer, so I'm going to drop it down to two seconds. And grub is updated. So let's close that out, um, and now we can reboot. So let's do sudo reboot, and I'll speed things up once again. All right, so we're booted back into the system. Now we just need to delete those mount points. You can leave them there, but I'm gonna get rid of them just for the sake of completeness. We're gonna pretend that this system installed uh, as it should have if the installer didn't have that bug in it. So we're gonna do sudo remove directory rmdir slash home slash top and enter in my password. And we're also gonna get rid of slash top. And there we go, that's everything cleaned up. 
Now, as for time shift, um, there is one small problem with time shift. So time shift has a bug in it, and it's actually documented on its GitHub, where it cannot see the drive that contains the root directory if that drive, and I mean partition in this case, if that partition is encrypted and you're not using systemd. So let me show that to you and then we can boot MX Linux with systemd and I'll show you it working. So let's go get time shift. Okay, so we're ready to start up time shift and it goes into the setup wizard right away. And let's click on next on BTRFS. And as you can see, it only sees SDA4, which contains our home directory. It doesn't know what to do. Um, so unfortunately it is broken, but that's because we booted with sysv in it. So let's boot up with uh, systemd and see how that works. All right, now most distros do use systemd by default, so if you're using something other than MX Linux, you probably don't have to worry about this. But if you are using MX Linux, you can use MX boot options to make systemd default. So just a heads up on that. Okay, now we're in our system. So let's go to time shift again. And hopefully its config file will uh, get reparsed. Otherwise, we can uh, uninstall and reinstall it. So let's go to wizard. Next, select SDA4. And actually, we have to choose the drive and not the little um, radio button. That's important. Aha, that's why um, they switched places. I expected the root drive to appear above because it's a lower number. But anyway, there we go. And then we can choose uh, how often that we want to do this, how often we want to do snapshots. So let's do like one monthly, you know, one snapshot a month. This is a virtual machine. I'm just going to throw it away. So whatever. Um, we can include the home directory. Those are a little bit annoying to get at from my experience, but might as well include that. And then we'll click finish. And then we can create our first snapshot because we can also create them on demand just as we can create them on a schedule. So let's do that and it should just work. Um, I will note that if you set it up inside of systemd like this and then go back to using sysv in it, you are not going to be able to create snapshots on demand and it's probably not going to create them on the timer for you. Uh, it does need to be in a systemd environment if you're using an encrypted root drive uh, the entire time that you want it to work. So if you absolutely hate systemd, unfortunately time shift is not going to work for you if you want your root partition to be encrypted. And there we go, we created a snapshot. So uh, that's the full guide. You have gone, if you followed this guide, you've gone from having an encrypted system, encrypted BTRFS install with no subvolumes to having one that does have subvolumes. You can boot into it, and if you're using systemd, you can even use time shift to manage having multiple snapshots and atomically restoring uh, to any point in time that you've saved with those uh, snapshots. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment and a like if this helped you out, and um, I might see you guys with another video. Bye.